Hi Phineas! I'm very happy and excited to see you to talk about one of the most important topics Steaming There are tons of tutorials out there on YouTube how to steam milk But one thing I noticed is that have these tutorials considered your steamer setup? For me, getting that silky texture milk every time regardless of the machine I used was quite a journey it started with this small domestic espresso machine from Sunbeam, an Australian home appliance brand. Once I started working as a barista, I faced many different commercial machines from brands like Lamazoku and Sinesso that dispensed them differently. With that in mind, I want to help you get the silky frosty milk with minimal failure rates in real life situations, whether you are steaming at home or in a cafe, to make your journey faster and smoother than mine. Based on my experiences, I will share 1. What you need to consider before steaming and 2. How to steam properly with these factors in mind. When I'm facing a new machine that I've never used before, I like to gauge how powerful the steam is and check how many holes the steam tip has. First, it is important to check the steam pressure by turning on the valve because it affects the steaming time. Typical home espresso machines have low steaming pressure due to the smaller boiler capacity. Also, how many holes your steam tip has is very important to consider because of different steaming jet directions. Steaming milk is different from heating up the milk in the microwave. It requires controlled aeration and texturing to build a silky smooth foam. And to achieve the perfect foam, you need to have the vortex, the whirlpool motion going inside the pitcher. And because of this, most of the commercial grade steam ones have 4 holes to achieve that motion and reach the temperature super quickly. By having more holes, you get to have more controlled turbulence in the milk. However, because it happens so fast, for beginners, it can be challenging to catch up with the speed. For starters, I recommend steaming with either one or two steam tip to practice and get the hang of it. So, if you have a high pressure steamer, try to reduce the number of holes with a different tip. Just be sure to find one that fits your machine. This will help you get the reduced steam flow rate and give you better control over texturing. Once you get comfortable with it, you can put back on the original tip and enjoy texturing with high steam pressure, just like you would with a racing car. The good thing is the fundamentals of steaming is the same no matter how many holes you've got. It comes down to two main parts, aerating and texturing. However, I will break it down into 10 steps with important consideration points for beginners. Step 1. Fill your pitcher half full with cold fresh milk. It is, it is important to fill the milk only about halfway and no more than two thirds because it allows room for the milk to expand and spin without overflowing. Have a good tip? If you are planning to steam milk for more than one cup of coffee, it is better to upgrade the pitcher size to a larger one or steam for each cup of coffee separately instead of overfilling it. Step 2. Purge the steam one for a few seconds. Purging is very important to get the dry steam. You want to get rid of all the condensed water built up inside the steam one tip. Have a good tip? Always purge in the drip tray. This is the safe and clean way of doing it. Step 3. Position your steam wand and pitcher. There are so many different steam wand lengths, usually they are short, but there are also longer ones that allow greater depth and range, like this one. Regardless of what steam wand you have, ensure the wand is positioned straight down and just slightly out from the machine. Hold your jug handle with your non-dominant hand. 
the left hand when you're right-handed. You will use your opposite dominant hand to turn the bell and support holding the jug and feel the temperature on the side of the pitcher. Edible tip! I've noticed some baristas place the wand in different ways, like this. However, I strongly recommend to rest the wand on the spot of the pitcher to fix and minimize moving during steaming. Step 4. Submerge your steam wand tip in the milk. Make sure all holes are submerged about 0.5 cm deep. Otherwise, milk will splatter creating uncontrollable large bubbles straight away, like this. Edible tip? If you are working with a powerful steam pressure, it is better to submerge a bit deeper, about 1 cm. But if you submerge too deep, you will hear a screeching unpleasant noise as no air is getting introduced. In that case, lower your pitcher. Step 5. Position your stem 1 in between center and side. This is a critical step for creating a swirling vortex motion. However, if you move too close to the wall, the swirling movement can become too big causing spillage. Also, the temperature does not rise evenly. Edible kit! If you are working with low pressure steamer, the steam will not have the enough power to circulate the milk. So try to adjust the jug just a little bit towards the wall. Also, tilting the jug will help swirling. Step 6. Turn on the belt to full blast. Activate the steaming as soon as possible to begin stretching. Swirling movement will start right away if you have positioned everything correctly. Step 7. Stretch the milk by lowering the jug. Control your introduction of air by carefully lowering your pitcher while keeping your vertex motion going. Make sure the tip of the wand kisses the surface of the milk during stretching. The air bubbles will be incorporated into the milk nicely with a chirping sound. But it is also important to do it as fast as possible till lukewarm temperature point or 35 degrees to allow more time for the next step, texturing. I will not go in detail about how much air to introduce as I already have a video for it. Please check out my video how to steam for flat white, latte, and cappuccino right after this video. I will place it in my end screen for you, or you can follow this link. Step 8. Texture by moving up the jug a bit and keeping it steady. Slightly raise your jug and continue to texture keeping the swirling motion. Keep an eye on the process to prevent accidentally introducing more air. And it would keep with less holes, the temperature will rise much slower. It gives you plenty of time to incorporate air into the milk and allows for more control during the process of steaming. But in exchange of the time, you will also have to do more to work with the lower pressure, especially with one hole. You need to keep controlled movements of holding your pitcher while keeping the vertex for a long time. Step 9. Finish your steaming. The target milk temperature is between 60 and 65 degrees. You will reach that once the side of the pitcher becomes too hot to touch for more than 3 seconds. And turn off the valve immediately. You can add or remove a few seconds if you want your milk slightly less hot or hotter. But be careful not to burn your milk by reaching over 70 degrees. Edible tip? Also invest in getting a cheap thermometer. Place your clip thermometer inside until you get comfortable gauging the temperature using your hand. Step 10. Wipe and purge after every use. It is important to keep the steam one clean. Always grab the steam one with protection rubber or with them close as it is very hot. Wipe the steam on properly with the damp cloth and purge to get rid of any milk residue which can lead to clogging the holes. Edible tip, use a dedicated cloth for cleaning just for the steam one. This will prevent from cross-contamination. 
Some cafes use saucers to place their clothes after each use. I think it's a great idea to keep it sanitary and prevent from getting too damp after each purging onto it. Now, can you check if I'm doing all the 10 steps correctly? Keep practicing until you get the hang of it and steaming becomes a habit of yours. I really hope you can enjoy your own texture milk with sweet rich mouthfeel taste and we can practice pouring latte art together. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time happiness!